Hello everyone and welcome back to another Batman Miniature Game 3rd edition battle report for the channel. Today in this 350 rep match we've got some new miniatures and a Soldier of Fortune crew going up against a Batman Who Laughs team. And just throwing out another appeal tonight models to please either update or incorporate the team's PDF into the app correctly to get rid of the inconsistencies between the two since one hasn't been updated in ages. The app seems to apply rules that don't exist in the team's PDF to certain teams like Teen Titans, Bat Family, uh, with certain discounts etc it would be nice to make it very clear how teams are meant to work in third edition rather than having to guess but with that out of the way let's go take a look at the specifics for both crews slash teams so here is the soldier of fortune crew there's six miniatures and believe it or not they have the most miniatures this time around oh, as my dog shoves into my leg and being led by the new arkham asylum bane the upgraded version of the the first edition Arkham Asylum Bane miniature. He's very similar to Bane Unleashed in his rules. He has uh, like flies to me. He has very similar stats, although he's attack five, not six. His main difference is that he is all about Titan. And he can use a Titan dose every turn. He has four of them. Normally he can only use one Titan dose per game. So he makes use of those. We'll cover those as and when it happens rather than front loading with too many rules, especially because we've got to talk about Scarecrow and Terror as well in a second. But he has the usual stuff, he's huge, he's desensitized, he's got charge, and he, had, he does have a special rule called Recover the Titan, which will also cover during gameplay. He is a veteran for the purposes of the objective cards. He's being joined by Bird as his sidekick. We have Infiltrate Up because she's just too good. Then we have Cachillo and Clover as kind of like the backup. And then their free agent is the Arkham Asylum Scarecrow. And when he was released as part of this Arkham Asylum set, they also updated the Terror rules. Terror works entirely differently now, and it certainly seems like the groundwork for a Scarecrow-themed crew down the line, which is very interesting. Uh, I'm very much wanting Scarecrow to have his own crew. So we'll talk about that more again when slash if he inflicts terror on anyone, so we don't front load this too much. Uh, he's a Shadowed Nightmare, so he doesn't need to start on the table. He does also have Undercover if you want to do it that way instead. He has some interesting rules. Again, hearkening back to the Arkham Asylum video game, he can stalk people and just likes doing fear. He's, he's pretty weak, he's very cheap, he's only 50 rep, he's, he's attack 3, defense 3, a 6-6 six, six miniature, but if he gets attacked, depending on the criteria and how it happens, he can kind of disappear into his shadows. So we'll hopefully see that as we play. They're going to be the yellow and black audacity markers. Uh, upgrade wise, they didn't have that much left over. Cachillo has neurotropic drugs and a titan dose. That's him at the back there. And infantry op has an extra round of ammunition. And that is it. So I wouldn't say the most optimised Batman Who Laughs team slash crew, but obviously the man himself has to be there to lead the team. And they're bringing along the Grim Knight, which takes up a big chunk of points as well. He gets a slight point reduction of 20... 21, I think? 21 rep for being in this team specifically. So it does make him a bit cheaper. It puts him at like 100 and something uh, rep. So we have two Batman, which is dangerous. And with the points left over, you can fit in three Robins Who Laugh. Upgrades-wise... The man himself has darkness, so he projects a bubble of stealth, uh, four inches I believe, and the Grim Knight has Hunter, which means that if he's attacking someone who's already been activated, he gains plus one to hit. And he is pretty good in close combat, it's not all about ranged attacks with him. He has reinforced gloves, he's got the stereotypical Batman stat line of attack five. Doesn't have defense five, mind you, but you know, he's still pretty good and they're in the red and black audacity markers. So we shall get set up and be back at deployment. And here we are with everyone set up. The Batman Who Laughs team is on your right and will be taking first activation unless they decide to pass. They have one pass. The Soldiers of Fortune with Bane are on the left. Scarecrow is not on the table. He has Shadow Nightmare as previously stated. So he's off the table with Audacity issued to him and will be appearing off of the back of a suspect marker placement at some point. Uh, good or bad in terms of like which side does it. Anyway, let's look at where everyone is first of all. So Infantry Op has hidden and has deployed down here next to Penguin's Duck with Audacity Marker. We have Clover over here deployed next to the Sewer Marker. And we're going to have to come around here to see the rest of the Bane crew besides Scarecrow. The three of them are all lined up there with Bane and Bird with Audacity Markers. And for the Batman Who Laughs team, one of the Robins is down here with Audacity. One of the other Robins is here with the Grim Knight. They both have Audacity. And of course the man himself has it with the other Robin next to him. One card being played is a Phase 2 by the Batman Who Laughs. And it is the Joker card, Psychopaths. So for people getting KO'd and casualty in this first turn, it'll add to this to potentially score for three at the end of the turn. Um, I think that about covers it. We'll, we'll deal with the team rules as and when they happen, as with Terror, as well as um, 
the Titan. Unlike Venom Dulce's Titan is not declared at the start of a, a turn. It is done when the model who has it activates, they can choose to use it then. That doesn't really matter for Bane because he has four and he can use one per turn, but it does matter for Cachillo who has bought one from funding. So the Batman who last did opt to activate and sent one of his Robins out, the one next to him without Audacity, but with a free Inspire from him obviously because he's the boss. He came forward far enough that he could safely put down a Suspect Marker, and we already have a bit of a rules clash here because he put down a Suspect Marker, it has become a Snitch. He played the Snitch card, and when you place it, the Snitch comes into effect. We've seen this plenty of times before, but there you go, you know how Snitches work at this point. However, the enemy can play one objective card during a, an activation of the enemy as well, so... Bane played Osito, which this is the uh, retranslated version of this card and it's still not well translated, just for the record. Play when an enemy model places a suspect, it is immediately replaced by an Osito marker. The model in contact with Osito may control it and it may be placed where you remember it. If a model controlling an Osito suffers KO or is removed, place it within one. Uh, if they're controlling it or enemy models within four of it, Bane gets some buffs. And essentially it's loot, but specific to Bane because he wants his teddy bear. Now, the Timing of this is important because what happens with the snitch that was played double check the FAQ Update they did fairly recently to see if this was covered at all when it was not so This happens the snitch happens when you immediately place and then Osito is played in response So presumably the Osito takes Priority and the snitch is simply discarded because it can't be both so if that's wrong get them to write the rules clear basically So this is going to be Osito that is sitting here, not a snitch, and the snitch will just get discarded. But the Robin who laughs is going to opt not to pick it up. It's going to stay there. Bane wants it, he can come get it, and then maybe the two Batman can team up on him. So we're back down by the duck because the infiltrate op was the first activation for Soldiers of Fortune. She moved up to the wall such that the larger part of that police jeep there is blocking her. Now she did put down a suspect marker, and that was within eight at the time of the Robin Hill laughs over there and he could not draw a line of sight to either because you don't account for her being so tall in that uh, strange base so that scores Black Ops for two so that's the first actual scored card of the game and then she made use of her hacking as a special action to just move the suspect marker back there just to if anyone wants it they have to come get it into the open well sort of into the open uh, Clover can see where that is if we just come down to here you can kind of see under the trees from where he is here. Out of range at present, but maybe for future turns. One of the two Robins who left that had Audacity, the one that just got used for Black Ops, activated. And their fast little so-and-sos, he ran around the corner into Infiltrate Op. He efforted twice, she efforted once. She is, of course, Defense 5. So it is pretty hard to do damage to her. That said, his attack roll was actually fantastic. Now she gets five defense dice, so she blocked most of it. If she didn't have that many defense dice, she could have gone down there. That's how good his attack roll was. Also in done, though, his blood stun claws did two hits. And they also do enervating one. And that was enough to score a cheeky one point with they won't see me coming. Cachillo activates for the Soldiers of Fortune down here next to his boss for that free inspire because he did not have a dash of his own. Uh, he's not super scared of the Grim Knight because he has a bulletproof vest, so does Bird, so does Clover. Uh, it's only Scarecrow Bane and Infantry Op that doesn't, and Infantry Op is Defense 5, so it's not super important. He, thanks to his neurotropic drugs purchased from funding, he has 12 inches of movement. Didn't quite use it all just to get up there next to the Batmobile, using that Inspire from Bane, put down a suspect marker. No cards in play off of that though, just setting stuff up for the future. Well, still not making use of that pass, the Batman Who Laughs activates, activated. The other Robin with Audacity, who moved forward beyond the Grim Knight just a little bit into the corner there, put down a suspect marker, except it was not a suspect marker, it was a stinky fish with it doesn't look fresh. So that is in play now and will score if it's not revealed. And if it is revealed, the person who revealed it gets poisoned, and that plays into some of the Batman Who Laughs unique cards. A super simple activation for the Soldiers of Fortune. Clover activated without Audacity, he was right next to that Sir Grey. The only thing he did for his activation was use it. He didn't go very far, he honestly could have walked it. <laughs> come to think of it but he is now over here steering down the Robin Hill Labs however during his turn though cyber attack was put into play we've seen this a few times now however the Osito card does not say that Osito still counts as a suspect marker so the only thing this can apply to is the stinky fish a two got rolled so or sorry a four which became a two so overall it became a four and that will start ticking down so if no one on the Batman Hill Labs team decides to get rid of their own stinky fish this will score in four activations time the Batman Who Last Team used their pass finally, so it was over to Bird, leaving just Bane, well, 
not just Bane anymore. He had a very busy turn. He's got one of the boys, so he counts as a henchman, so he had a free inspired manipulator on top of having a Dassey. So he could do a lot of stuff, and we're gonna have to cycle around the table here. He moved up 10 inches to where you can see him there between the trees. He used that free inspire manipulator to put down a suspect marker off of the back of that, which is hard to see between the trees there. Scarecrow popped up right there, and when he does that via Shadowed Nightmare, Henchman within range 6, uh, get Innervating 1, it does not say it requires line of sight weirdly, which seems like an oversight, but it doesn't say it. So that Robin and this Robin now have Innervating, which honestly isn't a good thing because it helps the Batman Who Laughs cards, but either way, Scarecrow is there and now can activate when he wants. Then for his actual tactical action, he dropped his one smoke bomb on himself. Now it's awkward to try and get a, a 2 inch, you know, or a 4 inch, sorry circle in there, it's only till the end of the turn, it's just to protect himself from the, the Grim Knight, so he's just, sorry about that, so he is uh, doing that, we'll just have to try and remember, and also during his turn he put into play a free-for-all, so if Bane's crew has the most models not suffering kill within four inches of the centre, the centre is roughly here, so we'll measure it properly during the end phase, this will score for two. Well, it was time for the man himself, the Batman who laughs, to activate, he moved forwards his ten inches and then used gold on Cachillo for an opposed willpower roll. He managed to beat his willpower and forced him forwards four inches into base space. Although that was mostly just to get him out of position because his scythe has reach on it anyway. Reach, I think it's only reach one. But either way, he goaded Cachillo into close combat with his double blood sharp bleed two scythe. And Cachillo efforted three times, of course. Uh, the Batman who last only efforted twice, still managed to get through three hits for six blood. And that does mean that Cachillo really should have used his Titan Dose on his turn. But, nope, he's not getting it, because he is dead. He is out of there. Now, this is interesting. Cachillo used to be worth 27 rep, which would mean that the team rule, again, assuming it still applies, for He Freed Me would kick in, and the Batman Halas would get another free Robin. But, he recently got rebalanced down to 24 points, so he's actually one less, and as a result will not spawn a Robin who laughs off of the back of it. So they consider themselves lucky because they were almost one man up again. So it was time for Scarecrow to activate, so we have to talk about his rules. He's got 8 inches of movement, he's not super fast. He used those to get up next to the lamppost there, and for his tactical action he put down a suspect marker, uh, such that he is within 4 of this one, but the one he placed is not. That's important for one of his rules, and I've got his card here just so we can read it in full. It's called Fear of the Dark, I think. Yeah, Fear of the Dark. When this model places a suspect marker target X, enemy models within 8 inches in line of sight, where X is equal to the number of friendly suspect markers within 4 of Scarecrow, each of those models must either suffer 2 stun or suffer the terror effect at the choice of its owner. So, with any line of sight, the Batman Who Laughs and the Robin were chosen because he has 2 suspect markers. He's always going to have 1 because that rule kicks in when he places 1, but yeah, that's position so he has 2. And they don't want to take the stun damage, so they're both getting the terror effect. So that means we have to read the new terror effect, which is really neat, and as I say, is very clearly the groundwork for a Scarecrow crew coming down the line. So terror reads, when an enemy model suffers the terror effect, you draw the top two objective cards from their deck, and you place one face down in a pile called the terror pile. You discard the other one. When an enemy model wants to make a willpower roll, attack roll, or defense roll, they can choose to reveal up to three cards that are in the terror pile, and then based on the type of card they have various effects. If it's one that has like the gun symbol, so it's an aggressive card, they can suffer one blood or one stun at Scarecrow's choice. If it's an exclamation mark, they get poisoned. If it's the, the body armor, they can remove one damage from a friendly model, so that's a good effect. And if it's the cog, they suffer enervating plus one. So if they have enervating, it would be up to enervating two. So th this is a really neat effect of kind of like showing them facing their fears and either failing to do so or succeeding, which is really neat. After applying the effects, discard the card back to the owner's deck. If you can't draw, the enemy model suffers instead to stun. Don't quite get that bit because it's a choice whether or not you draw up to two cards, so... Don't quite get the last part, but that's not relevant. So because two models just suffered to stun, a total of two cards have been discarded, and two cards are now in the terror deck. If the Batman Who Laughs want those back, you're going to have to potentially risk either getting poisoned, taking damage, etc. Well, last activation for the Batman Who Laughs team was the Grim Knight, and we've got a little bit of new model syndrome, unfortunately. He made use of his back claw to hop up over the wall into Scarecrow's back and used his reinforced gloves on him. He efforted once, Scarecrow didn't effort at all, and 
Actually, Scarecrow did really well with his defense roll, to be fair. He rolled two sixes and a five, but still was not enough. Six stun got through. Now, that would normally just knock him out. However, Apex Predator was played as a resource. When a model within eight inches of the Batman who laughs model sex successfully completes a melee attack, change all stun to blood. So, unfortunately, that six stun is actually six blood, which means the Scarecrow is dead. This is going to be a quick match you know, for no matter what happens. Now, uh, prior to that though, made use of a terror deck just to see the effects and took both cards out in order to get them back. As a result, he took one blood or one stun damage, taking stun because Bane can easier, well, it's easier for Bane to knock him out rather, and he gets intervene. So that is what the Grim Knight has on him now, but he took out Scarecrow, which is a shame. Uh, Scarecrow did have a rule called Back to the Nightmare, I think it's called, where if the terror deck is used, as in something is taken out of it, after the action that removed it is completed, so in this case it would have been the attack, if he'd stayed standing, he can fade off the table to come back in via Shadowed Nightmare again. But that's six uh, willpower, six endurance. No match for a Batman, and he doesn't have Charmed or Charming to have a chance of defending himself uh, that way in close combat. So unfortunate, but glad we got to see it in action a little bit. Really looking forward to a Scarecrow crew that makes more use of that. I still think the free agent Scarecrow is probably better, but he doesn't have the updated rules. He's still, well, except for Terror, obviously, because it's a status effect. But he doesn't have anything like Shadowed Nightmare and Back to the, the Nightmare, which is really good. And then this, his Stalker rule can let him count f uh, as being within a certain distance of friendly suspect markers rather than where he is, if he has to do, like, uh, Inspire Fury or anything. Which is also a pretty cool rule. So yeah, I'm looking forward to them getting a crew. It's a shame. But you've got to play to win, right? And the Grim Knight saw an easy mark. We're still on the back of the Grim Knight's turn because I uh, just noticed also the Soldiers of Fortune can actually score a hard point. Thanks to Scarecrow doing very well with his defense roll. A friendly model within 8 inches of another friendly model with a veteran trait. Baird is there and has veteran. Successfully blocks at least 2 hits. He blocked 3 and again you can play one of your own... Uh, objective cards during each enemy activation as well. So that did score. Also, just to mention it right now, Cyber Attack has ticked down and scored too. So it was time for the Big Bad Bane to activate, and that means using a Titan dose. So we're going to read what Titan does. Got it here. Titan, if you use it, it gives you plus one to attack and defense, making him attack six, defense three. Although he has like flies to me, so his defense set doesn't really matter. Plus four to his basic movement, and plus one to strength die. Also, because he moved closer to Aceto, he actually had an additional 4-inch move he could have done afterwards, but he chose not to. He went after the Grim Knight, who is a Batman, but he's only defense 4, does have bat armor, so no strength die. Bane efforted twice, and the Grim Knight efforted nothing, and his attack roll, unfortunately, with his unleashed strength, which is exactly the same as Bane unleashed, it didn't do that well. He also has a special action used unstoppable, so every successful hit would require 2 blocks. So that's why any damage got through at all. He managed to get through 4 stun. On top of the damage he already has, the Grim Knight is up to 6. Which means he is barely conscious with uh, 1 stun remaining. But not a great showing from being there. Now I should also mention he has a rule called Titan Addict. Which let me just get that up real quick. So when he uses the Titan Dose he can ignore 2 damage markers per source of damage. So any attack at the end, until the end of the round. However, it does have a downside. If he receives three blood while he's on Titan, the Titan effects stop kicking in. So that is a way to bring him back down in a turn. Uh, I did also totally forget he has a, a rule called Recover the Titan, which can be activated when the enemy places a suspect marker. You can reveal two objective cards. Uh, the opponent chooses one to play face down, and then if you have the most... Oh, I forgot to mention, the suspect marker he picks becomes a Titan dose. It's still a suspect marker, but if you have more models than the enemy within it, by the end of the turn, whatever card was played face down, you just instantly score, no matter what the card is. Totally forgot about that, focus too much on Scarecrow. It has its upsides and its downsides, because obviously you can't control what card it is the opponent does, but it is an interesting role that is unique to this version of Bane. Oh, and did forget to grab, real quick, where is it? Uh, let's see, there we are. Search and Destroy scored for two, despite him not being able to take out the Grim Knight fully. The enemy model suffers at least two hits during an attack action where a friendly model performed two efforts. That he did. Usually he gets those two free efforts for free when he's on Venom, but Titan doesn't give that. So that is the end of an exceptionally bloody battle round one, and despite losing two of their number, Soldiers of Fortune very comfortable with what they scored there. 
Uh, the Batman Who Laughs crew almost lost to Grim Knight, which would be, would be very bad, but doing okay, I think, and setting up some plots for future turns. We do still have, come, uh, have some card plays to talk about. Uh, however, I did forget to mention, the reason Bane went after the Grim Knight, not the Batman Who Laughs, is because the Batman Who Laughs can just pass off the wounds with Protect Me to the Robin behind him. There was a reason for not going after him, because obviously the Batman Who Laughs team falls apart if the man himself isn't there. So that, that was the reason why he didn't go after him. Uh, also didn't mention the Grim Knight's Enervating was chosen to be used. Uh, it seems like you can do that, even if the model itself doesn't intend to do any efforts, so that might be wrong. Either way, of the cards in play, Free For All does score, because Bird is there and that Bane has Tough Guy, so he counts as 2. So it does indeed score, 3-2, to two, and the score is stick to the plan for having more suspect markers down than the Batman Who Laughs does. I believe they have 4 or 3, let me just see here, 1, 2, 3, versus technically just 1, because the Cito doesn't count apparently. Of the cards in play for the Batman Who Laughs, the Stinky Fish does score though. So that has scored for two. Psychopaths does not because it is three all. Or no way, no, it's two to three. So does not score. So as we go through phase one and phase two of Battle Round 2, there is a slight correction because when Scarecrow went down, he was a free agent worth 50 rep. So there is now a Robin Who Laughs popped up there. It would not have changed Bane's turn at all. His goal was to try and take out the Grim Knight. So it doesn't change anything. It's just there is now an extra Robin on the field. So with that said, everyone healed one stun at the end of the turn, etc. And we're into the new turn and the Batman Who Laughs team has once again taken first activation. Audacity markers wise, this Robin has one. So do uh, Clover and the infantry op for Bane's crew. This Robin does not. The Grim Knight does, he's going to try and get out of dodge I guess. And the Batman Who Laughs and that Robin do as well. The new Robin does not. Bane, Bird, they're the other two Audacity markers. There's only one card being played. It is by the Batman Who Laughs team and it is Corrupted, a phase one. By the end of the round, at least five models suffer the Enervating and or Poison. Uh, Scarecrow would have inadvertently really helped with that because he had a spray that does Enervating and Poison. I think it's Enervating three, maybe two. Oh well, he's dead. Well, of course the Grim Knight had to be the first activation of the Batman Who Laughs team so he can do something before he potentially gets knocked out and or murdered. He used his back claw on turn one though, so all he could do was run away a slow eight inches down here. From his living arsenal rule he selected that his guns this turn will have uh, assault and a red dot and he shot at Clover who he lost his strength die to their bulletproof vest but managed to roll 556 five, for 6 blood and he just killed him. This is going to be a very short match based on the rate at which people are becoming casualties. So that is Clover gone, he will not be getting an activation, it did not score any cards there wasn't uh, any way to fandangle points out of that but it just removed another threat. Well, with a mighty roar, Bane injected himself with another dose of Titan, charged forward, didn't bother going after the Batman Who Laughs, because again, he would have just used Protect Me to get rid of it. He smashed into the Robin, just smushed him against the wall. Also into base to base with Osito though, because that's what he was after. So Bane has taken Osito, and if he's still holding it by the end of the game, it'll be worth three points. He efforted twice, the Robin did not, and uh, his damage was more like what it should have been this time. I don't know if you can see it all there, but he managed to do 8 to a defense 4 character, which is pretty good. Very very much knocking the Robin out, and scoring the second of a potential 3 out of focus, search and destroys. I think it's in focus now, there we go. So, at least Bane did something better that turn. He didn't go after the Grim Knight to try and finish him off because he wanted to get hold of Aceto before it was potentially moved. Now that might not be the best bet going ahead, but I guess we'll see. So the newly spawned Robin Who Laughs from the corpse of the Scarecrow activated without Audacity, but right next to his boss. He did eventually run down here his 14 inches, but before leaving he used that Inspired Manipulate to remove the suspect marker he was basically spawned upon, which means that so long it's been a guess, could score. This is the, the old version of the card, the language has been cleaned up a little bit. Essentially because he revealed an enemy suspect marker, you choose a friendly model, they put down a friendly suspect marker and suffer enervating too. He picked himself, so that's why there's a friendly suspect marker there, and also why he has enervating too. Well, the dwindling numbers of Soldiers of Fortune activated the Stealth Op. Uh, sorry, not Stealth Op, the Infantry Op. It's only her and Bird left over. She moved around the other side of the police car, put down a suspect marker and met the criteria for another Black Ops. And once again, after scoring that, because it scores instantly when the criteria is met, she used her special action to hack. She moved the suspect marker she placed over here into the open, and then moved the stinky fish from the first turn through the wall right next to her. 
for reasons unknown. She's in a bit of danger where she is, but at least she scored before potentially going down. Well, the dwindling numbers of Soldiers of Fortune activated the Stealth Op. Uh, sorry, not Stealth Op, the Infiltrate Op. It's only her and Bird left over. She moved around the other side of the police car, put down a suspect marker and met the criteria for another Black Ops. And once again, after scoring that, because it scores instantly when the criteria is met, she used her special action to hack. She moved the suspect marker she placed over here into the open and then moved the stinky fish from the first turn through the wall right next to her. For reasons unknown, she's in a bit of danger where she is, but at least she scored before potentially going down. The Robin who laughs that had Audacity down here activated, he ran amongst the trees there behind the Grim Knight and revealed the enemy suspect marker that had been there and kicked off another so long it's been a gas. You don't have to pick the model that revealed the enemy suspect marker, you just pick one of your friendly models. So the Batman who laughs was selected, so now there's a suspect marker next to him that was placed and he is suffering Enervating 2, which is obviously a pretty big downside, but it does mean at present the criteria criteria for corrupted scoring is in effect, as long as nobody gets removed from the table while they are suffering from Enervating. So Bird activated, last activation of the turn already for the Soldiers of Fortune. He could technically have gone after this Robin, forced the Enervating away, but Corrupted's only worth one point, and he saw an opportunity to score two, so why not go for the plus one? He moved his ten inches out of line of sight, around the corner there, from where the Grim Knight can currently see, so he is there and he is removing oops, he is removing the suspect marker, and in doing so, he is scoring confusion because it's within eight inches of the Batman Who Laps deployment line. So he is scoring two, so yeah, Corrupt is gonna score. Now thanks to that Robin being knocked out, it is over to just the Batman Who Laps to take us to the end of Battle Round 2 already. So the Batman Who Laps had a pretty simple turn, although just gonna cover real quick in case you were curious, when Clover died. He is worth more than 25 rep, however there are 4 Robins on the table, so you can't spawn any more. A sidekick or a leader would have to die to bring in the Commissioner or um, have a Damien who laughs. So, he's just playing for points because although they're winning the fight on the table, they are definitely behind victory points wise. So the Batman who laughs, he positioned himself on the far side of the Sir Graying there, put down a suspect, uh, a suspect marker, it became a snitch, and he's the last activation of the turn, so it's just an instant score, so we're just saying this has scored. Uh, now, so it's three points, which is a nice way to catch up, do a few more of them. And with that, yeah, we're into scoring for the second round. So at the end of the second battle round, the Robin who laughs that was knocked into the brick wall by Bane amazingly managed to wake up. So he might be getting an activation next turn, depending on whether or not Bane smushes him again. So he is conscious, and uh, there's an equal number of suspect markers for each side currently, three each. So could not score a stick to the plan, but what they could score on the Soldiers of Fortune side is the grossly unfair card, Ground War. It is too vaguely worded, we've gone over this many times before, it drastically needs either removed or changed. But have at least two friendly models not suffering kill within four inches of the same scenario element that's also within or inside the enemy deployment zone. Baird and Bane, you know, they're within the building, they're within the, the, the bike shed here, or the lamp post even, so, you know. It easily scores for three. The Corrupted card in play does score. There's five models on the table exactly, suffering at least Enervating 1. Some of them are Enervating 2. So that did score for one. And with that, into battle round three. So we're at the top of round three, the penultimate turn, and the Batman Who Laughs team has finally managed to steal first activation. Uh, they have Audacity on everyone except the Robin in the bike park there. And the Robin, oh we know he has it, oh and the Robin that just woke up, because just anticipating that he's going to get murdered by something. The three surviving members of the Soldier of Fortune crew all have Hadassi, Bane, Bird and the Infiltrate Op. Each side is playing one phase one card. The Bane crew is playing their Die Hard and it is being played on Infiltrate Op to try and force some activations away on the other end of the table. Because she is wounded, to be fair, and another corrupted card is going to play for the Batman Who Laughs, so if nothing changes by the end of this turn it will just score as well, because it's still true at the moment for five models suffering enervating or poison. Well it was the Grim Knight who got the turn started, he used his back claw just to make sure he could get into position because he is only an 8 inch move, as previously mentioned, to go after the infiltrate up in close combat because that's his best chance, double stun from reinforced gloves, he's close combat master for full rerolls, so he wasn't that scared of her defense 5, he did effort once, his stun damage is still a little high but he did manage to get three punches through, which is enough that she is knocked out. 
However, he didn't score anything on that, and during his activation, the Soldiers of Fortune put a Global Offensive into play. It basically has no chance of scoring. Uh, they have to have more veterans in play than enemy suspect markers. She's a veteran, and Bird is. I don't quite remember if this Bane is. He might, he might be. I think every Bane is. So, but either way, it still isn't scoring at present. Could change before the end of the turn, though. Oh, and with Infiltrate Op being knocked out, Die Hard is not scoring, so just going to discard it now. They don't have any means by which to revive her within the turn, so it would come back to being able to score. So just discarding it now. Haven't been mentioning Osito, but that obviously is still in play as well, because Bane is holding on to it, and ain't nobody taking that off of him. Well, down to two activations left for the Soldiers of Fortune, thanks to that. So Bird activated, he just ran deep into the deployment zone for the Batman Hill Aves team. Put down his suspect marker, however, he played another global offensive, this time as a resource to move the uh, infantry op slightly out of danger. A model that suffers KO is moved 4 inches directly towards the nearest friendly model with a veteran trait, so she has been moved. It might mean that, like for instance, the Robin who laughs over there can't get her to hit her while she's down. This one can, but doesn't have audacity, so it might help her out. The Robin who laughs with audacity down the Soldier's Fortune end of the table activated. He put down a suspect marker which turned into a snitch and then moved up behind the Batman Who Laughs to give him a protect me and get out of jail free with Bane obviously activating soon and there's the, the snitch card that's in play. Well Bane activated and he actually found a way to ruin the Batman Who Laughs day a little bit. He ignored the Robin who is conscious there. He made a, act, a move action but not before using the special action charge which means he has to move in a straight line and then wherever he ends up any models he passes through you roll a strength die against them and they take two stun if you get it through. So he charged all the way down here, and remember the Titan Dose gives him plus 4 inches of movement, so he's 14 inches. So he charged through the Batman Who Laughs and the Robin, got them both for 2 stun. Ended still in contact with the Robin to then attack him. He efforted it twice, we just rolled the strength die because at that point he only had 2 stun left, it got through. And the 2 efforts were just to score the 3rd and final <laughs> search and destroy. So not only has he done that, but he is also within distance that Snitch will not currently score unless he's somehow removed as a casualty, which... Uh, Probably isn't going to happen, but we'll leave it in play just in case. The wording for charge is a little bit weird because it says any other damage they would normally do is ignored. That presumably means any other damage they would do because of some kind of movement action or special action. It doesn't say you can't do a tactical action attack. So after Bane's activation there, it was down to three Robins to activate, two of which did not have audacity. So we're just going to quickly cover all three of those now. The one in the bike park just hopped on over into base space contact with the unconscious infiltrate op. The one who was knocked down stood up with impaired movement and moved a little bit towards his boss. And then the one down here who did have a Dassey, he moved and put down a stinky fish. So at least there was a card put into play. And with that, it takes us to the end of the turn. So at the end of battle round three, the Robin who laughs that Bane knocked out is staying knocked out and infiltrate up for the Soldier's Version is also staying knocked out, which is a bit rough. Uh, the Acetal card stays in play, so there, it's very unlikely it's not going to score. For, for Bane in the final turn there. Uh, the Global Offensive put into play by the Infantry Op that was left on this end of the table. It does not score, so it's discarded. They again couldn't score uh, for having the most suspect markers because the Batman Who Laughs has kind of taken the... or pulling away with that. Uh, oh, this innervating symbol should be with the Robin. Of the cards in play, the It Doesn't Look Fresh does score, which was just put down. The Snitch doesn't, Bane made sure of it, so no, that is discarded. Now, Corrupted. Innervating got used up by the Robin that Bane knocked out, but knocked out is a status effect, but that doesn't matter because it's only Innervating and Poison. So one, two, three, four. Nope. Missed out on it by one. It's only worth one point, but still. Yeah, so that is discarded as well. Dawn of the final day, top of round four, the final turn of the game. Everybody who's alive and conscious all have a dusty. Uh, the Aceto card is still in play, and joining that is a Phase 2 from the Batman Who Laughs. It is another Psychopaths card It would have done much better in one of the previous turns, but hey, it finally got into hand, so we'll see if that scores. But that is it, and the Soldiers of Fortune do have first activation for the third time out of four, unless they choose to pass, of course, because they have uh, three passes. Well, Bane opted to simply activate. He couldn't get at the Batman Who Laughs. He's surrounded by two they can pass off damage to. So he just went for an easy score. He attacked the Robin that was on the ground unconscious. Uh, oh, actually, yeah, he couldn't be a target for Protect Me because he was unconscious. Didn't matter, though, because Bane battered him into a pulp. No damage markers down, but he got 8 stun through and in turn would do more than enough additional blood damage from being unconscious that he is removed as a casualty. And that was simply to score 
they must know pain because that was the only card he could score. It's only one point, but hey, whatever. And then he just kind of ran away. He ran away down here. I like that he's just hopped up on Titan. He has no idea that his whole team almost is dead. He's just running around hitting things. It's very in character for this version of Bane. So maybe wondering to yourself, did Bane forget that in early turning that poor Robin who laughs into paste on the floor uh, would put one marker on Psychopaths? Then yes, Bane did indeed forget. Anyway, the Robin who laughs who's in base to base with the infantry op activated, took some claws out, efforted three times, didn't bother putting it down. Um, got her for 5 blood, 5 stun on the floor, would on top of that do 5 more blood. She is very much removed from the table, putting another marker on Psychopath, which means it will not be able to be stopped scoring, even if Bird puts down a suspect marker. And also, just to get out of hand to try and cycle something more useful, and played another Psychopath, but this one has a resource. If, so, if a model, friendly or otherwise, suffers blood damage, you can use this resource to place two attack counter markers on a friendly model. Giving that to the Batman who laughs, just on the off chance he goes after Bane. So there wasn't much Baird could do, he just simply went around the side of the bone to try and get away from the threat radius of the Grim Knight and put down a, well, he didn't bother putting down a assessment marker because even if he did, Psychopaths will not score, or sorry, will score, he can't stop the scoring of it. He put into play a free-for-all, it's got no chance of scoring, it was just to see if maybe they could draw into a phase four that could score, they didn't, so their game is done. So it's just down to what a couple of the Robins and the Batman who laughs wants to do to take us to the end of the game, see if there's anything that they can do to score. So the only thing that matters in relevance to scoring is the Robin who laughs down here can come over here and he can put down a snitch, didn't even bother putting it on the table, but it, it just ends the scores because there's no activations left. So in terms of cards that can score, that's the last thing. However, I'm going to quickly roll out the Batman who laughs uh, over there, getting into base to base with Bane, just to see what he can do against him. But well, that was an interesting little test to see how strong Bane was. So he came down here, the Batman who laughs could only effort once because of the Innervating 2 that was opted to be used. Bane efforted three times, so he was down two dice with his double blood scythe. He, uh, Bane rolled very well for his defense rolls. Only the strength that I got through, but it was with a crit, so the bleed two procs. For a total of five damage to Bane, I think he has 14 endurance, and two of that goes away to his Titan Addict roll. But it is worth noting, three blood still got through, so if there was still more of the game to play, for the remainder of this turn, the Titan effects would not be applying, because three blood has been done. So the Titan for this turn is kind of like drained out of his system. But yeah, Bane lived very comfortably, and that takes us to the end of the game. So before we go to the final score piles, there's no additional cards being played, so it's just the ones in play, and they counter each other out. The Osito card does score, Bane ended the game with his precious, precious teddy bear. This is the old version of the text, which is just nonsense. Anyway, that scores for three. The Psychopaths card also scores for three, so they've cancelled each other out. I think the Soldiers of Fortune have this, but they've lost on the table, but I think they've won it on points. Let's go see. Yeah, upon feeling how thick each deck is, yeah, it's very comfortably going to be a Soldiers of Fortune win. Sometimes all you need is just a large muscular man from Santa Prisca charging into people and turning them into paste. Let's uh, do the Batman Who Laughs score first because it's definitely the easier pile. So that is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Not a great score. They, didn't, they had uh, explosive teeth in there that they didn't get. Uh, Apex Predator cards were kind of cluttering up. I, I feel like Corrupted has a place, especially with um, if you didn't have the Grim Knight, who has a hair on him, I just noticed. But uh, the, the Apex Predator card, you need all the fighting to happen around the Batman Who Laughs to make that card work, because it can't really score. Uh, you need to kill someone within four inches of four suspect markers, I think. Anyway, Bane's score. Four, five, six... 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. I honestly thought they had more than that, actually. But still, 27 plays a rather poultry 19. The Batman Who Laughs wins on the table. There's only, well, Bane and Bird, but Bird ran away. Bane would have went down sooner or later to the combined fire of the, the two Batmen. The Grim Knight only shot his guns once, so... He had plenty more to rely on to, to get in there against Bane at distance. But, so was a fortune with Bane, win the day with the points, and that's all that matters in the end. Thank you very much for watching, I sincerely hope you enjoyed. Please do remember to show your support if you would like to see more in the future, and until next time, that's for now.